Hello everyone and welcome back. So today I'm going over on how we can use COPS alongside with SOPS to achieve these custom patterns uh, in Odini. So yeah, let's get into it. So this is the final result of the pattern and as you can see it tiles. There are some issues with the borders, but for the most part it works really well. So yeah, it's quite a network, but it's just repetition after all. So I'm starting by creating the pattern with uh, an SDF shape, just a circle, and making sure it doesn't repeat. Then I'm transforming it and mirroring and inverting and we can multiply to create the tile pattern so this is our shape then we need some points to to instance the shape as you can see this will be the final result as you can see and we need to take care of the instancing attributes and the id also so it uh, tiles perfectly so yeah let's get into the um, the points first of all i'm starting with a grid with a grid of points and making sure it scales from the center so i can i can connect the rows and columns to the size and subtract one and then I'm creating the X tile pattern. And for that I need to make sure to have a row and column attributes. And this part of the, the network was done by Fenolis. He helped me on this one. Basically we're creating a column ID attribute, as you can see and we also creating a row attribute and from there we can filter some of the points and remove them to create the x style pattern but this row and column attributes will be really important for the next steps so right here i'm creating the the rotation attribute the sprite rotation and this is just the pattern I identified by looking at the reference image. So basically we're creating uh, an ID and I can show you how that looks. This is the ID where it alternates on the odd col column on the odd rows and it also alternates on the even rows. We just need a different ID for, for each one. That's what I'm doing in here. In these patterns that I'm establishing. And from there I can say if the ID is equals to equals to zero. So these ones. It will have a rotation of minus 90 and so on. From always on the rotating by 90. And then I just set the sprite rotation to that variable. So this is fine, but then if we we can instance the, the points, but if we tile it, as you can see, the IDs, the other parts will be fine, but the IDs will be messed up. So we need somehow to match this ID to the other side and the top IDs to the bottom ones. That's what I am doing in the next wrangle. So basically I'm counting the rows and offsetting the ID attributes. If I show you how that looks. So ID and this needs to be called ID so it the COP network reads it. So as you can see, if we look at this column, it will be the same as this one and the top one the same as the bottom one. So it tiles perfectly, as you can see in here. Now, 
they have the same ID on the other side. And this is important because we will use this ID to create some color variation. So that's why in here I, I am using this ID to STF to create the, the shapes. So as you can see, this is styling perfectly. But in this case, I ended up not using this because I'm going to recreate the pattern in subs. So as you can see by the final result, I also have the circular pattern of stones. And for that, I ended up relying on subs again because I couldn't get it to work with just uh, UV manipulation where you take a ramp, a circular ramp and then UV sample but the results were not good enough at least in my experiments so I ended up creating the pattern in SOPS and it might look complicated but it is actually pretty simple this is the network as you can see I'm just doing a for each count uh, how is it called for each for each number and creating a circle let me just reset the network so creating a circle and changing the divisions based on the the meta import node the iteration detail attribute so for for each iteration it will increase the divisions and then in here I'm just creating the normals, pointing out and then picking it by 0.25 times the iteration, fusing and then extruding just a bit. And just to make sure we don't have an obvious pattern, I'm just randomly rotating with a theta1 function using the detail attribute the iteration detail attribute and if we run the loop as you can see if i don't have this random rotation it will be really obvious this repetition so this just helps to blend in better and that's how i did that part then I'm creating a, a prim ID attribute on the primitives so I can make sure I, I maintain the, the single tiles because right now I'm going to subdivide it and I still have that primitive attribute and then I can group the from attribute boundary the prim ID and the primitives around and blast them away to create this inset and from here i'm just saying uh, creating an attribute called stones that i'm also creating in here for 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 the center piece and for the back piece i'm just giving it a different id so i can target it later and this ID attribute will be important also to do the UVs and also to give it some color variation. So this is the SOPS, then I'm rasterizing it. And as you can see, I'm rasterizing by position and making sure I'm fitting the, to the bounding box and scale to fit. And I'm just uh, increasing the size just a little bit so it aligns better with the pattern if I show you in here as you can see so it aligns here because if I have it to default it will have these small stones so I'm just scaling it a bit in and after the rasterizing I can rasterize the attributes in this case the stones that attribute that i created and the prim id so after we have these two layers the stones and the prim id we can you we can create the uvs using this uv map by id hda 
and we just connect the prim id and it will create the uvs then we can offset it a little bit using the id as the seed just offsetting between 0 and 1 and then we can just image sample some texture that i have in here as you can see some stone texture and we image sample that then we can from the id create a random mono and that can fit to an HSV adjust where I, I am decreasing the value and increasing the saturation. And after that, I am also, what am I doing in here? Taking the stones, I guess. Taking the stones. And adjusting and inverting it as you can see with a compare node and then I can just decrease to have this background darker then we go back up and look at the UVs in here and and with these UVs from the initial shapes we can UV sample in this case image sample and we will have the pattern So the only thing left to show is on how to create this outline pattern of stones. So for that I'm relying again on cops, as you can see from this sub import. And let's go through the setup. Basically I'm starting with a circle, converting to line and clip the left and the bottom, resample and transforming it down the same shape and merging and then just mirroring it and the, the reason I'm doing it this way is because we will have equal amount of points on all sides on all parts of this shape so when we combine them and later we will fuse them they will have this, the same amount of points on each side so they match perfectly if we if we do the resample after it would create many problems so we have the shape and then we can copy two points and use this the same uh, sprite rotation so i'm importing the points from the previous setup you can merge a sop import in here as you can see the, that's why we save that out point no and then i'm just setting the normal and the up and rotating the the up by the same amount of that sprite rotation making sure we set it to radians because that we had degrees in that we have degrees in the sprite rotation UP scale is just set to one and we copy two points then orient along curve, so we have normals along the tangent of the curves. This way the stones will follow this shape. Fusing everything, deleting the attributes but the end, and making sure we set the app attributes to use in the, in the instancing of the stem points. Then we just box clip to match the pattern we created before. So rasterizing the setup and stamping the points. As you can see it's just the default shape and we get uh, almost perfect uh, tiling. And from there we can do the same process of image sample the, the same stone texture adjusting some of the tiles uh, in, uh, introducing the darkness the darkening effect on the between the stones and blending with the original texture so that's basically the setup 
this is the albedo I'm also creating some displacements and also creating some scattering density attributes as you can see so I can instance some grass between the stones later so I get uh, some roughness also um, that's basically the setup so in case you want to go a bit more deeper in these sort of setups I just released a two-part series on my patreon where I go over these sort of techniques combining sops and cops and if you are interested in that make sure to check out my patreon other than that I just brought the textures to Solaris and uh, scatters uh, some grass and uh, that's basically my final result i hope you really enjoyed this one and learned something from it if you want you can grab this full scene on my patreon and other than that thank you for watching and i'll see you next time